What's up, guys? This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and today is all about uh, USMT and NDT. I'm finally covering USMT. Now, uh, if you don't know what USMT stands for, it is User State Migration Tool, which is part of the ADK uh, package. When you install it, ADK is needed for NDT to work correctly. It is an additional feature that you need uh, that you're able to back up the user's profile, uh, like documents, my desktops, and place it somewhere else. Then you're able to wipe clean the machine, rebuild it with a new operating system, then migrate the person's information, like their my documents, their desktops, into the new machine. How cool is that? So let's get started. Now, the first thing that we need to do is uh, do a little bit of configuration. We need to do a little bit of legwork. So I'm going to provide you guys a Google Doc, and the Google Doc is uh, pretty neat. It has three links with basic information. We need to get the user exit script, uh, which I will provide you the script that I'm using on the video so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, these two variables right here is going to be part of the custom settings.i9 file, which I'm going to show you how mines look, so do not worry. All right, so the script. So I'm gonna show you guys where the script is at. So I'm gonna go inside the PC Explorer, C Drive, Deployment Share, Scripts, and it is called User Exit. I'm gonna right click on it and go to Edit. I will, again, I'm gonna give you guys this VB script so you don't have to go crazy and copy and paste anything. So what it does is grabs the current user's computer name. So this machine right here, which is Windows 7, right? And it's logged into a user account, which is called Flash. This machine is part of my Active Directory, which I'm gonna go right here. My MDT is also my Active Directory. So let's go inside Active Directory, and I'm gonna show you guys. So computers, this is a computer right here, okay? This is the machine, it is Windows 7 machine. I can also confirm it by going to Start, right click on Computers, go to Properties, and again, it is part of my domain and this is the name of it, Windows 7 Upgrade. Now the user exit script grabs the computer name and stores it within the OSD computer name uh, variable within your custom settings. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you guys pretty soon. Then, once you have all that configured, I'm gonna close this up, and I'm gonna close this up, all right? You just have to place it inside the script folder. Now, where the magic? The magic's going to happen within the property section, but before I even start, you need to create your task sequence. It's a basic task sequence, which is this one right here. I'm gonna right click on task sequence, go to new task sequence. You're gonna give it an ID. I'm gonna go gibberish and give it a task sequence or whatever you want, gibberish. Uh, the only reason that I'm entering gibberish is because I already have one. So click on next. And the template that you want would be the standard client replace task sequence. Okay, this is the one that's going to initiate the scan state and the capture within your deployment to retrieve all that information on the current user. So we are going to hit next and just follow the prompts and that's it, it's pretty simple. So let's uh, hit yes to cancel that and I'm gonna show you the one that I created. Okay, very standard. It's gonna capture the user state, uh, capture the groups, it's gonna apply the Windows PE, restart the computer. It's pretty simple. Now, once you have your task sequence, the next thing that you need to do is configure the custom settings.ini file. But before I show you guys, you need to do is create a folder where you could capture the user's information. So I went inside my C drive, I created a folder called USMT. It really depends, it doesn't matter what name you call it. Just make sure you give it the correct security. So if I right click inside the folder, go to properties, I shared it out and I just make sure that everyone has access to this particular folder, okay? That's the permissions that I gave everyone for access and I just shared it out, okay? Now let's get inside the custom settings i9 file. So if I right click on this guy right here and I go to properties and within properties, I'm gonna show you guys the magic. Now taking a closer look on my custom settings i9 file, uh, I use user exit equals to user exit dot VBS. And within that script, there's a function called get offline computer. And I'm assigning that function to the OSD computer name. I'm also using the OSD computer name and I'm calling that variable out for my UD directory. 
okay? So that basically means when I'm going to capture the user's profile, it's going to drop it inside a folder of the computer's name, which I'm gonna show you. And then the UD share would be the location of where I'm dropping it, which is the folder that I created, right? I'm also calling out the scan state arguments of vbros o and c i'm also calling out the user mnt mig file 001 you don't really need these two at all but i just add them just for the hell of it and i also called out the load state arguments of vbros 5 c l a c everything is done i'm gonna press ok my deployment is already updated and I'm gonna go inside my Windows 7 upgrade. But before I even start anything, let's go inside the C drive. And this folder is completely blank, right? I'm gonna refresh it a couple of times. And I just wanna show you guys there's nothing in it. So let's go inside Windows 7 upgrade. This is the name that I called it. And let's go inside starts. And let's go inside uh, our MDT server. And I'm gonna do C dollar sign because I need to get into the root. And let's give the admin right. Awesome. So within our Windows 7 machine, which we are upgrading to Windows 10, but we need to grab all this information, right? Before I start anything, I have a lot of files within my desktop, right? And I'm logged in into an account called Flash. And Flash also has files within documents. I also have pictures. I want all this stuff to travel. But if you upgrade this machine to Windows 10, it's going to create a nasty little folder within your C drive called windows.old. And that folder is gonna be huge. I want a clean slate. I wanna wipe it clean, install the operating system, but grab the user's information and migrate it over to the new build. And from here, within our uh, deployment share, right? I'm inside the root. I'm gonna to go to deployment share, gonna to go to scripts, and I'm going to locate the light touch. It's gonna to be the VB script. We're gonna double click on it. It's going to prompt me for the user account control. So let's enter our admin account. Now the admin account that I'm using should have full access to the deployment share. Once it loads up, the one that you want to do would be our replace task sequence. So let's click on it and click on next. And automatically, uh, because I don't have within the custom settings.ini file to disable the user data, it's not skipping it, it's gonna show me. It's gonna say VMDT, USMT, OSD computer name. Now the OSD computer name would be Win7 Upgrade. This is what we should see within here. So let's go inside MDT server in here. So I'm gonna right click on it, refresh, nothing, right? So let's go back inside our machine. Let's click on next. And now we need to get some information. Awesome, and click next. And let's hit begin. And the process is going to start. What's gonna happen is it's gonna do its thing and eventually it's going to reboot the machine and then continue. And then still within the deployment environment, it's gonna say successful or receive an error. All right, it looks like our state capture was completed successful. So let's jump over to our MDT server. And long and behold, within our USMT folder, uh, our Win7 upgrade. Now that's the computer's name. All right, we double click on it, we should see a USMT folder. And inside that folder, we should see our migration file, which is a compressed file with everything in it. Okay, awesome. So you're probably saying to yourself, what's next? Easy. If you already created a standard client task sequence that basically deploys an operating system, the feature is already there to deploy, um, what you call it, the, the user's information. Okay, so check this out. So I already have a Windows 1064 1709 enterprise task sequence. I'm gonna double click on it. I didn't do anything special. It's a basic, 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 basic. This right here, restore the user state. By default, it's enabled. So I'm going to press OK. Again, this standard client task sequence is a base, it's gonna wipe the operating system and reinstall it. So I'm going to take this machine right here and I'm gonna right click on it. I'm gonna power it down. Let's shut it down. All right, I'm gonna shut this down. And once it's completely shut down, awesome. We are going to start it up and I'm going to press F12 like a madman because I want a pixie boot. 
There we go. And I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to pixie boot inside our deployment right now. Now it's time to pick our task sequence. So I'm going to pick the standard client task sequence, which is going to deploy Windows 10. It's not going to upgrade it. It's just going to wipe it clean, partition it, and install Windows 10. But also migrate the user's profile. So when you click on it, let's click on that and let's click on next. Now with the computer name, it's still assigned to Windows 7 upgrade. How cool is that? And it's because of the custom settings.ini file, that OSD computer name. Now the next option is move data and settings from a previous version of Windows. We definitely want to move the user data and settings. Okay, that's what we want. Let's click on next and let's give it the time zone. Again, you can customize all this stuff within the custom settings.ini file, but for me, I didn't bother doing that. So let's do Eastern time. There you go. And let's click on next. I'm not going to capture anything. So next on that. And I'm going to hit begin. It's gathering all the information. And once all that's done, it's going to partition the machine. Wipe it clean, reinstall the operating system, then take the files within this share, this share right here, take those migration settings and move it over to that computer with the same name. All right, so let's go back into the machine. It looks like it's running the offline user state capture, which is pretty cool. All right, guys, it looks like our operating system deployment completed successfully. How awesome is that? So let's click on finish. And the only thing that I forgot to do was join this machine to the domain because you got to understand that flash account was an active directory account. But if we go inside our Fire Explorer, let's click on Fire Explorer and let's go to this PC. Let's go inside the C drive. And within the C drive, let's go to users. Now check this out. If we were doing an upgrade from our Windows 7 upgrade machine, we'd have got a Windows.old. We did a complete wipe and reinstall the operating system. Now the whole magic of this is migrating over the user accounts. So if we double click on users, there goes our flash account and BTNHD because that's the other account that I have too. So let's double click on it. Let's go on desktop and all the files. Awesome. Let's go back. Let's go inside documents, my folders. Awesome. Go to flash. Let's check out pictures. Let's see if pictures are there. My pictures are there. How awesome is that? Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. I will provide the link to the user exit uh, VB script as well as a copy of my custom settings.ini file and also my Google Doc. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Leave comments right below. Don't forget about hitting that like button and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.